Our court was Roe v. Wade. For the background for this case, it all began in Dallas, Texas in the June of 1969. A woman, Norma McCorvey, wanted to abort a child. At first, when she was trying to go through the process, she was actually advised to lie that she was raped. This attempt failed, though, because there was no police report on the alleged rape. She also considered getting an illegal abortion, but that also didn't work. The case went through a district court, which ruled in favor of the legal aspects involved in her case, but she was not given an injunction against the enforcement of Texas law on abortion. In the judicial opinions on this case, rape was not even brought to the table. In 1970, she filed the suit saying that the abortion, aborting laws in Texas violated her constitutional rights and also the rights of other women. The case was filed on behalf of Norma McCorvey, but she used an alias to protect herself. Her alias was Jane Roe. According to court records, she was forced to give birth to the child she was fighting to abort because of how long it took for the decision-making process to be finalized and the length of the court case. She gave birth to the child and then gave the child up for adoption. Her lawyers were Sarah Weddington and Linda Coffey. They represented her when she began to file an appeal with the U.S. Supreme Court on the grounds of unconstitutionality and amendment violations. The case of Roe v. Wade involved many different violations. The violations brought in court with the amendments were of 1, 3, 4, 5, 9, and 14. The Fifth Amendment saying that any person be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of the law, nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation. The Ninth Amendment was used in this case saying the governmental power should be limited. However, the Texas government was trying to infringe on the power of the people. The right to privacy falls under Section 1 of the Fourteenth Amendment saying no state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. They thought that the law in Texas was stripping women of their power and to privacy. The state law of Texas prohibited the discontinuation of a pregnancy by surgery unless the life of the mother is threatened. It was essentially a ban on abortion. The argument of Roe was under the Bill of Rights, a woman has the right to abort. Their side said that it is unfit for the state of Texas to deny people the personal, familial, marital, and sexual right to privacy. Also, no case in history has ever stated that an unborn child is its own living being. Therefore, it has no legal rights and should be submitted to the choice of the mother. In addition to their argument is that the Texas law has on abortion is far too intrusive on women's rights to their body and ought to be capsized. On the other side, Wade, Dallas County District Attorney Henry Wade, the state has a job to protect unborn life and that at the time of conception, there is life. This being at the time of conception, the baby has a right to protection under the Constitution. Texas's view is that police powers reserved to the state are set in stone only to protect the health and safety of citizens, including prenatal. The court sided with Roe and backed up her right to end a pregnancy in the first trimester, which is 90 days. Also, the court observed that Section 1 of the 14th Amendment held three positions referring to the person. Justice Blackmun, Supreme Court judge, said that for most constitutional references, use of any word is such that it has application only postnatally. None indicates any assurance that it has any possible prenatal application. The final vote was 7-2 with the majority vote. They decided that during the first trimester, the woman who consulted her doctor had the right to abort. In the second trimester, states were allowed to control abortion when it affected the woman's health and safety. During the third trimester, the state has a say to protect the life of the fetus over the restrictions. The concurring opinions were from Chief Justices Berger, Stewart, and Douglas. Berger states that he agreed that under the 14th Amendment that the abortion rulings of Texas limit the act of abortions when needing to protect the health of a woman using health in a broad medical context. 
The Justice Stewart said that the Constitution, like ours, for free people, liberty must be used freely and interpreted as so. Douglas believed that related cases established a constitutional right to privacy broad enough to encompass the right of a woman's desire to terminate an unwanted pregnancy in early stages by obtaining an abortion. The dissenting opinions were from Chief Justices William H. Rehnquist and Byron R. White. White backed up his opinion on this case by saying that the court simply fashions and announces a new constitutional right for pregnant women, and with scarcely any reason or authority for its action, invests that right to sufficient substance to override most existing state abortion statutes. Rehnquist thought the court's historical information contained flaws. He said that the court necessarily has had to find within the scope of the 14th Amendment a right that was apparently completely unknown to the drafters of the amendment. Roe v. Wade was a landmark case on abortion. It was a case that essentially legalized abortion nationwide. Roe brought to light that these laws were unconstitutional. Laws such as those that limited abortion to only when women's health was endangered or instances of rape, incest, and fetal abnormality. This case made abortion more accessible to women nationwide. It also made abortion clinics safer and legal. It also was a reflection on the changing times for women and it changed the precedent for abortion cases in the Supreme Court to come. Between 1967 and 1973, four states, Alaska, Hawaii, New York, and Washington, reveal, repealed their abortion bans, while 13 others enacted limited reforms. Even while the case was still being decided, other lawsuits that contradiction criminal abortion laws made headway with the courts in more than 12 states. We agree with the court allowing to women to, to have a choice when it comes to their own bodies. We believe that the case Roe v. Wade impacted women and their rights forever. It set standards for women and their control over their own bodies, and it gave women the freedom to make decisions about their own bodies without the government having as much say as they previously did. It allowed the state to not have as much say in what they were doing with their bodies, and it really did give women more control over their own bodies. Thank you. Thank you.